guys, if you have any question or comment uh, while the presentation, you can ask uh, Dr. Mataz for that, okay? Don't hesitate to ask any question because it's really a good opportunity for you to understand many things related to Arabic language processing. Thank you so much, Dr. Nabil. Uh, please let me know when you see my screen. Yes, we see it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nabil, for the warm introduction. It's it's really my pleasure to uh, to uh, to be with you uh, to give a lecture about the natural language processing. And uh, I would like uh, to add a small information about my bio, I, uh, I, I, I really wanted to say it by myself uh, that I, uh, I was a former student uh, for Dr. Nabil. So it was in the bachelor degree uh, at the Islamic University of Gaza. So it was really honored that he um, taught us the artificial intelligence course and also he supervised my graduation project. So uh, I wanted just to say that uh, uh, personally. Okay. Um, okay, so today I will talk about the natural language processing or the uh, NLP. Okay, and here is the outline. I'll just let me uh, in. Yes, so we will talk about the introduction. Uh, we will introduce uh, uh, natural language processing. We will talk, we will discuss and ask uh, why NLP is hard. And uh, we will uh, show some uh, uh, NLP related tasks. And then we will go into the details. So for today, we will talk about the regular expressions, why it is important for the natural language processing and also text normalization and the edit distance. And uh, just a brief, uh, uh, some few slides about the deep neural network because uh, we, we should have this uh, little background when we, when we talk about the, the uh, some of applications or like the questioning answering system, the QA system, and the machine translation, the MT. Okay, as you know that uh, artificial intelligence is a subfield of computer science. And as you know, artificial intelligence has a lot of uh, subfields like problem solving, optimization, robotics, machine learning, computer vision. And one of them is the natural language processing. And in fact, it's uh, yeah, it can be also a subfield of machine learning, but also uh, uh, the natural language language processing uses some techniques uh, for the um, uh, 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 some some uh, uh, some classical techniques for for processing the text. So that that does not belong to the machine learning. So. Uh, um, that means that natural language processing can be under machine learning and also can be directly under artificial intelligence. Okay. And uh, yes, so the natural language processing. So uh, what is NLP? <clears throat> okay, the NLP, let's imagine this scenario that we want, you want to say something to, uh, to a dog, okay? So say, okay, Ginger, I, ha uh, I had it, uh, you say, uh, you stay out of the uh, uh, garbage, under understand, Ginger, so the Ginger is the name of the dog, stay out of the garbage, or blah, blah, blah. And, okay, what the dog understand? So what the dog understands that it's like, blah, 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 Ginger, blah, 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 Ginger, so he just understand that it's like the, the, the man just called him and he asked him to do something. So 
the speech for him is not fully understood. That's obvious that because dogs uh, do not understand our language. So the fundamental goal is to analyze and process human language. We want to make computers, by the way, to understand the human language. Okay, broadly, robustly, and accurately. That is the fundamental goal. Okay, and we want to build end-to-end -end systems. What, what I mean by end-to-end -end system that you have a system like this and you have just an input and you have an output. Okay, so this end of the system just receives some input and this end of the system receive, uh, produce an output. Okay, and the, uh, our ambitious is to be to, to build uh, speech recognition systems, machine translations, uh, information extraction, dialogue in, uh, interference, questioning, answering, and so on. And we will see that why it is ambitious for us because it's some of them, it's really challenging problem and it's it's really hard to solve. Some, some of them are solved. And okay, the most the, the modest uh, uh, goal is to the modest uh, end uh, systems is like spell correction. That is what you have in your uh, word processor, for instance, or just a really naive or simple task like text categorization. So, for uh, a given article or a given document, you want to categorize it uh, into a predefined categories. And uh, as you know, uh, that uh, these applications, uh, it's like you can uh, try it uh, with yourself. I'm, I'm sorry that this example in, in Arabic. So it's, this, is, this is the Google Assistance. This is um, where you have, uh, uh, because I, I really want to show some applications first, then we go uh, further into, into the details how we can build such system. So the Google Assistant can assist you at, at anything. You can just speak to him directly by voice. So I, I spoke to him because I want to test, uh, it's like, is he really intelligent or not? So uh, 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 this is a greeting and he responded and I'm asking, how are you? And he said that, okay, it's like how I can help. So this question that I wanted to ask to 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 see that if if really yeah, yeah, the uh, the Google Assistant is, is really intelligent or not. So I asked him, are you uh, a boy or a girl? So he, he said that okay, I I I prefer to be um, unbiased. So neither boy neither girl. And I told him, uh, um, I don't know. It's like I should say I told him or I, or I told her. So I, I told the, the Google Assistant my name and he just understood that he's like, would you like me to call you with this name? I said, yes. Then it's like the, the conversation continues. Then I ask it later, okay, um, uh, what is my name? And he just remember my name. You can ask him about the weather. You can ask him the, about the prayer time. You can also ask him what is the capital of this country, um, Austria, for instance, um, and uh, what are the spoken languages or what is the formal language there? Because if I want to go there, I really want to understand, uh, to, to know what uh, people speak there. And I can ask him in Arabic also uh, about the flights. Uh, um, uh, like the duration of the flights from Cairo to Vienna, for instance. So uh, he can understand and he can uh, answer this and um, uh, um, yeah, read it for me, uh, by the way. And um, okay, this is this is really good, by the way. It's like it helps you in, in like in a lot of things. But imagine this scenario. Uh, you know Alexa. Alexa is the 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 the, the, the personal assistance uh, made by uh, Amazon. Okay, so like this is the mother. Okay, 
and this is a boy that he solves his homework and he asks Aliska 8 multiplied by 4 and Alexa responds and he just write down the answer and he asks about the next problem and the, 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 the next assignment and so on and the mother told him no that's not the way that you do your homework and uh, as you see that it's like Alexa is a small device that you can put it on your house like uh, any uh, 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 um, uh, it's like that. It's like uh, as the spotlight. You can put it in your room, and you can just ask him by voice uh, any question you want, and uh, Alexa respond also by voice. And um, uh, um, uh, one one application that you can also try it yourself. It's uh, this application is called Elsa. Uh, in fact, I evaluated this application because it's uh, it's claimed to be it's AI powered. This this application it teach you the English language, and it can um, the the application can um, um, can identify your problem. That okay, it's like you have uh, it's like uh, a problem in the listening in uh, in uh, in. Uh, in, in some syllabus and also here you have a pronunciation problem with this phonemes for for instance or this this voices you have a pronunciation problem okay and and also you like the application can score the your knowledge to vocabulary and the fluency so it can like tell you that okay your level is intermediate in english and then it can give you a score so this is something really powerful that you can try it by yourself that we reach to that level but to to, to reach to really reach to that level it's 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 really hard problems to need to be solved that we will see how to do that today and uh, Another application, yet another application, it's called image captioning. And the image captioning is to provide a description for an image, and it's really useful for so many applications in image search. And uh, uh, you know, it's like your phone is powered with this technology, by the way, you can uh, uh, find images related to food and find images related to uh, uh, outdoor uh, uh, activities so 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 for instance that uh, it's like big this uh, image it's it's a girl with pink dress is jumping in air so it describe what is in the image and also what is happening so this is called is image captioning and this task is uh, in the crossroad between the natural language processing and computer vision because you really need to understand what is what are the objects inside the uh, the image that you have here a boy and here you have a woman or women and you have here some uh, other objects and you need to generate a text using natural language processing techniques that describe the, the these objects and the relationship between these objects so that's that this application is called image captioning by the way and uh, uh, in fact, I have done a research about image captioning. And um, yeah, yeah, by the way, you, you can find me on, uh, on Google Scholar. You can find my profile in Google Scholar. And you can find me also uh, on the GitHub. Uh, one of the research that I have done with my uh, colleague uh, from another university, it's about image captioning for low resource languages. And the hypothesis is that we want to test if uh, like whether the machine translation is good enough for image captioning to, to generate resources for low resource languages, such as Arabic, for instance, or not. So that was, uh, we evaluated this uh, method and we uh, claim that machine translation is good enough to uh, um, generate captions and in Arabic. So, in short, that we we can conclude that the natural language processing is uh, it's like you have the computer and you want the computer to understand the the, the natural language that the language that we speak. So, 
the input is a language and the output is a language. So as we see, that's like I ask it, the uh, assistant, uh, when is the sunset? And the, the answer is generated in, in a form of natural language, a language that we understand. So the challenge is to make the computer understand our language. And this subtask or subfield is, is called natural language understanding. And the other side of the problem is to uh, to provide the output or to generate the output. And this problem is called natural language generation. So we can ensure that it, we can say that natural language processing is uh, natural language understanding plus natural language generation. Okay, everything is okay for the moment. Uh, just give me some feedback, please. If everything, I need to speed up a little bit, slow down. The sound is okay. Everything is fine, doctor. Everything is fine. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have so many tasks in uh, natural language processing, and it's really important that uh, you identify this task and you can pick one of them and work on them. Um, like if you want to do some research on the natural language processing, so you can pick some task and work on it. Okay, so, so, so the first task, task is machine translation, is to make the machine uh, translate um, from one language to another. And the, uh, the, the, we also have information extraction, where you we have some uh, information uh, unstructured in information, we want to extract this information and present it in a uh, structured way. And the information retrieval that it has so many application in in, uh, in search, in information search, that you search for some, for a specific information. And the, the text summarization, so you have um, um, a long article that you want to generate a summary for that article. So it's a challenge that you want uh, you you should make the computer um, um, uh, learn how to generate uh, a summary for a given text. And also you have the tagging task. The tagging task include the part of speech tagging and the named entity recognition. Part of speech tagging. It means that you tag the um, the uh, the uh, the words in the text in uh, with the part of speech tagging, which is like uh, a verb or a noun or a preposition uh, like this, and the named entity recognition that you want to tag the words in your text with the name of locations, the name of persons, the name of. Um, uh, um, organizations and it this is really 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 important this is really useful for other applications that you cannot see the benefit of this task directly but it's used in so many applications like the google assistant for instance or the qa system because the google assistant is a qa system at the end the point here is that uh, um, it's like if you ask who is the president of the United States of America, so you you ask you ask it who, so you are looking for a person that is a named entity, okay, and uh, that that's why it's really useful, uh, uh, okay, and and for instance if you are looking for some adjective that that's why that's that's how the part of speech uh, tagging is really important and it's useful. And for the speech recognition, it's it's the, the objective is that you can uh, um, you we want to make uh, the the computers understand our speech. So instead of typing, what is the nearest Italian restaurant? You just say it directly to your mobile phone, and the mobile phone should uh, um, uh, use the AI technology to understand to to. To, to understand your speech directly and generate the answer for you. So the nearest restaurant is uh, 30 meters far away in that direction. So that's why speech recognition is something really powerful that you can communicate easily with the, um, with the computer. 
And also we have some other tasks that can be, it's like the language modeling. It's, it's really useful in so many applications when you search in Google uh, search engine, for instance, and you, the Google search engine predicts the, the, uh, what is the next word that you, you, you can, uh, that you might, you might type. So it can, like this is uh, based on the language uh, models that can be, uh, that can be used to generate this, uh, yeah, to, to, to predict the next uh, word that, uh, the keyword that, that you use in search. And also it's, it's used in the speech recognition and also it's used in the machine translation. This is something really useful for the other uh, um, uh, uh, machine learning, uh, sorry, for the, for the other uh, natural language processing tasks. And the dialogue system where you have a conversation with uh, with the computer and as as we see with uh, uh, with the personal assistance and so many other tasks, but this is the most common one that we uh, it's like we can show some examples there for. Okay. Why NLP is hard? It's it's really challenging because uh, the first problem is the ambiguity. And the problem of the ambiguity is, is like we can demonstrate it by this example. Uh, so consider the sentence, uh, at last a computer that understands you like your mother. It has so many meaning. So the first meaning is it understands you as well as your mother. That means the computer can understand me and it can understand my mother. And the second meaning is that it understands that I like my mother. Okay, that's, an, that's, that's a different meaning, that I like my mother. And the third one is that it understands you as well as it understands your uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, your mother, and uh, um, and uh, it's like as you see, uh, it's like as you see, uh, um, uh, uh, it's like this ambiguity in, in in the meaning is 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 really hard to resolve uh, even for the human themselves. And we have here in the uh, the, another example of ambiguity at the acoustic level, okay? And the acoustic level in the speech recognition task. So we have the acoustic model that 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 you convert the uh, the sound into phonemes. So, so consider these examples like I'm eight or duck. I made her duck. I made her duck. I um, ate her duck. All these sentences it's like sound yeah, the same. So it's really, really hard for the computer that it can differentiate or distinguish between these sentences because it's it's really the sound is is really the same. For you as a human, maybe you can yeah, it's like you can understand, okay, I it is this or this because of the context, but for the computer you need to really build a robust model, a complex model that you consider the context to understand that. And uh, okay, this is we have uh, we have also the ambiguity at the semantic level, and it's uh, like the word mother as we saw in in that example. So a mother is a woman who can give a birth to a child, and it's like if your uh, background is biology. The mother is a string of a slimy substance consisting of yeast cell and bacteria. So this is something really uh, uh, related to the it's like biology background, or it's it depends on your your or your background. Okay, and uh, we also this is a this is another instance of the. Uh, of the ambiguity, like they put money in the bank. It means also it's like not only put money in the bank where you bet you put the, um, the the money that you 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 spent the, the coins. I mean, 
uh, also you can use it to uh, to um, express that you buried something in mud okay and also consider this i ho i saw her duck with a telescope so it has so um a uh, different meaning if you consider the uh, uh, because of the um, ambiguity okay this is more ambiguities it's like it's like i will not uh, go further uh, in this it's like in uh, enraged cow injury farmers uh, 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 injury uh, farmer uh, with axe okay so it's it's really funny because and it's 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 like considered this hospitals are sued by seven food doctors so it's it's the meaning is is uh, ambiguous even even for ourselves it's like stolen painting stolen painting found by tree it doesn't mean that the tree found the painting but it's the meaning is that the the, the painting was found near the tree so that is also more examples with the uh, 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 with ambiguity and um, and um, yeah, since you are taking artificial intelligence I, I guess that you have a background about uh, the search because search is uh, is um, yeah, is really uh, um, uh, is one of the uh, techniques to solve problem if you if you can formulate uh, a problem in a search problem that can you can say you can use search algorithm to find the solution and if you find the solution that means that you are a problem solver and if the machine can find the solution that means it's it's intelligent it's it's like a human the, the human humans are problem solver okay so this you have this sentence okay so these objects are protesting as you see and Okay, the, the parsing, as we said, the part of speech that we, it's like I need to describe this, that you have a sentence. The sentence is composed of noun phrase and verb phrase. And the, the noun is uh, uh, Hershey, okay? And the verb phrase is parse protest. Okay, so that this is the verb phrase and the noun phrase again, okay? So this is the part of speech uh, tagging so uh, the computer need to search uh, it's like for um, um, a specific word with a specific tag based on a specific sequence like this to find the answer okay um, and also you can build the grammar with uh, um, um, a grammar model with the uh, for the computer that uh, to make the computer understand the language, this is the Pacos uh, context-free uh, grammar. So the, it's like you can say that okay, we have a root, and this is the sentence. So okay, so the root it's the whole text. Okay, you you uh, chunk it into sentences. Every sentence is noun phrase and verb phrase. Okay, and the noun phrase is uh, a preposition. So, and you associate that with the probability based on the data. So this is data driven sequence, as you see. So it's like this, every, every sentence is composed, uh, yeah, composed of noun phrase and verb phrase. And this is the probabilities. Like, as you see, most of the sentences are, uh, are like so. And the noun phrase uh, 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 yeah. Into a proposition is uh, yeah, you have this sequence with this amount of probability and so on. So it's it's a it's a probabilistic based uh, approach to uh, to uh, to find uh, the solution for something. Okay. Uh, okay. The dialogue system. Uh, it's like as you know, Elisa. It's the first chatbot. By the way, it was built. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, in 1964, okay, and in fact, I, I tried myself at, uh, uh, it's like at the beginning of the millennium, it's in the year 2000, and it's, uh, yeah, it's something, it was really uh, 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 amazing at that time, but it's, it's 
it keep repeating itself finally if you keep talking with uh, elisa it's like you can discover it's it's not intelligent because it was it's like uh, but by that time it, it's it's based on the regular expressions that we will talk about it later in this lecture and um, here is the recent the state of the art what is the it's like the state of the art in the for the you have the ibm watson so the ibm watson is uh, it's like you know this game it's uh, it's a game that you you have some questions so you have here human as you see humans they are competing with watson as you see here so you have uh, ken and brad they are competing with uh, with watson and watson uh, uh, it's like uses the information in uh, wikipedia okay to uh, yeah, uh, to predict what is the answer. So a camel is a horse designed by, and it can find the answer uh, using uh, some search technique and the Wikipedia, because you have this information in Wikipedia, as you see. Okay. So uh, uh, we can consider this Watson is a, a questioning answering system that was developed in uh, uh, 2011, and as you know, IBM always built smart machines because uh, IBM is the first. It's like IBM company is the first company that who built the deep blue machine. Uh, 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 it's an AI powered machine that uh, beat the uh, Kasparov, it's the, the the world champion in chess game, as you know. OK, so Watson can beat all the people all the time. So it's it's this 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 is really solved problem uh, the QA system. So because it it really uh, can retrieve uh, can can find the answer for a lot of information that as the human. OK, and uh, let's just switch to another task, which is the information extraction. Information extraction is really important. So the motivation, let me just move here to motivation of the information extraction, is that to find, um, to map a document uh, collection to a structured database, because you you can use it in, in a complex search, like, it's like I don't have a job, for instance, and uh, it's like find me all jobs in advertising being at least 50,000 in Boston. So that is a query that I need to find this information. And this information, as you see here, it's 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 written in a free text and the in uh, um, an, an, an advertisement. So this is a free text. So we need to map this document into a structured database so we can extract the industry which is ad advertising it it was extracted from uh, this company uh, sorry this uh, sentence so 10th degree is a full service advertising agency i should highlight this with the yellow by the way okay and uh, the position is called an accountant assistant because uh, um, uh, located in 10th degree is looking for an assistant accountant manager so this is was extracted from here, OK, where you have this location and the company name and the salary, as you see, the compensation. So uh, uh, we have uh, uh, like a lot of companies, a lot of organization, they have unstructured uh, uh, information that is stored in document collections and uh, uh, and uh, and the, 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 it's really useful to map these unstructured information in, in a structured way so you can uh, search in it and you can find the information really quickly and easily. Uh, this is just an example for the, uh, it's not all, it's like it's not in your, the Google Assistant is not in the in the mobile app, you can use it in the web version. You can just ask some a simple question. It's like, what is the distance between moon 
uh, but between Earth and Moon. And it's like you have uh, like the answer extracted. This is the distance here. And uh, the summarization, the idea of the summary uh, of the text summarization that you have a long document and you want to develop some machine learning algorithm that can score your sentences. OK, this is important. This is important. This is important. So it gives a high scores to these sentences and extract it as a summary. There is another another method, which is uh, uh, this is this is by by the way, it's called extractive summary. And there is another method. Uh, it's called generative summary. So the summary is just not it's it's not picking the uh, some sentences from 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 that uh, from the text uh, in the document. It generates a summary. It's a complete summary that can be generated for uh, from this uh, document. And that's that's the, by the way one of the recent advances at advancement in the natural language processing that you can generate a text so now we have some natural language processing models can can write a story or can write a complete uh, research paper so it's 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 really amazing that uh, um, that um, how the text is accurate the generated text OK, and yes, so let's 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 um, dive into some details. So the first topic it's we will we will talk about is the regular expressions and what is uh, uh, wh why it is really important to process text. So you have now a lot of text. You need to play with it. So the first thing that you, you can do is to to understand what is regular expressions and you can use it. And before we proceed, uh, before we dive into details, any questions so far? Guys, if you have any question, please ask uh, Dr. Matas for that because you will not have uh, him again. So. Like if you have any uh, ambiguity or something unclear, you can just ask a question. Okay, so we assume that uh, I think everything is clear up to this moment. Okay, okay, you can, Doctor Matas, you can proceed. So silence is a is a positive uh, <laughs> is a positive <laughs> is something positive. <laughs> I don't know, positive or negative. I always tell the students, if you don't talk, that's really a doubtful uh, situation. We don't know if it is uh, a satisfactory thing or unsatisfactory. No one knows. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, the regular expressions. So you know the regular expressions. It's it's uh, the regular expression by itself. It's uh, it's a language. It's a formal language that you can use it in any programming language that you you uh, you you know. So you can use it with PHP. You can use it with Java, Python, any any language. So once you learn this language and this language, by the way, it's it's wonderful. This programming language. So the idea is to, uh, for regular ex expression is uh, it's like to string matching. So you specify a text uh, strings. So it's the main purpose is for string matching. And what I mean by string matching, it's like, it's like for you, is this similar or different? Just let me make a little quiz to, uh, to make sure that they are following. <laughs> He's asking you a question. Okay, so he's saying uh, whether these look the same for you or they are different. Just say your opinion. I mean, at least you should participate. Uh, some, some is uh, singular and uh, two is plural. Okay, so this is the first one and the second one. Uh, this is oh, it is. This is the same like this or not? No, this starts with capital W. Exactly. 
exactly. So you have a four forms of the of this um, uh, um, term, okay? And the idea that we want to match them all. This is really useful in in search. So how you can how we can do that with regular expressions. So for instance, you can just uh, it's like open brackets, okay? And it's like you can tell that okay, I search for W small or W capital wood chunk like this. So the map the matches as as you see here, it's it's the two words, the capital one and the small, uh, the the one that starts with the capital letter and the one that starts with the small uh, letter. And between brackets, it, if you write it like this, it's it's like it matches any digit. Imagine that you want to make uh, um, a search for a specific numbers in the text, so you can identify this pattern. And it's like you can make it like this. It's any single digit. So instead of writing the whole sequence, you just write it's any number between zero and nine. And for the lower case, for any letter, so you can write it uh, like as a range from A to Z. So this is a sequence. This is, it's like any any letter from A to Z small, and this is A to Z capital. And this is matches only for one letter. So the button, the regular expression button for this, it matches D because D is capital. And this is, it's M. So because it's uh, because it's small letter and this is match it with uh, this number because it's a sequence that we want uh, a digit and you can make negation by the way so it's like um, uh, it's like I'm looking for uh, uh, anything uh, not from A to Z capital that means that you are it's like the first match is why this is the first small letter uh, uh, in your text so this is it's like the match for one character by the way we will see how we can make this uh, applies to uh, 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 one or more characters okay this is neither as neither neither as capital neither as small so it matches any letter except for these two asses, the, the capital one and the small one. And like, as you see, it's the first match, it's I, okay? And uh, it's like neither E nor neither hat. So it's that's like the first match is L. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the button is A carrot P. So it's, it's like look up for this. So this is the match uh, for you. And you can use the pipe for or that you can, okay, you search for this button or this pattern. So the matches is two words, as you see. And you can, it's like, as we see here, the sequence, it's, it's, it's like, it's or between them. So you can write it this way or you, you can write it this way. So it's the same thing. Okay, the regular expressions is that, okay, this is exactly, uh, 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 the, this is the, uh, the optional, okay? The, the, um, the question mark is optional. The, uh, the, the star is uh, zero or more, okay? The, uh, the cardinality of the matching, let's say, and plus it's it's one or more so if you specify this color so you can tell that u is optional something optional in your matching so that's how you match color without u and color with u okay and if you uh, it's like specify the stars stars that means like the 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 it's like you you match the O, uh, it's like the um, uh, uh, the the repetition of the character O can be zero or one or two zero or more characters, so it can matches O 
with one O, with two O, with three O, four O, as as much as you want. And as you see, this is really important in text normalization. We will see later that we use regular expression to normalize uh, the text. And uh, to normalize the text, that means that we need to uh, convert all these forms into one form so it can we can find the result easily like this okay this is one or more uh, uh, it's like the cardinality cardinality is one or more like this so this is the same and that dot is any character okay so now we will move to the text normalization that every NLP task need to do uh, text normalization. All the tasks that we uh, described at the beginning, it needs text normalization. It's, it's the first step that you need to do with the text. So the normalization, it means the segmentation or tokenizing the words into uh, in, in running text and normalize word format. So you you normalize it, you make it in, in one form. Okay, and also it uh, you can segment sentences in the running test uh, text. So how many words uh, uh, in the text? We have, uh, it's like, for instance, consider the word cat. So you have cat and cats, you count it as a one word or not. Uh, that's that's a different word, so that's why it's it's um, it's it's really important that you normalize if you want um, the all the matches for the thing that you search for. So we have the lemma. Lemma is same uh, stem. It's like the words that uh, have the same stem. It's a uh, part of speech, rough word sense. For instance, cat and cats have uh, the same lemma. So the word form, cat and cats has different word forms. And how we can uh, it's like describe the text? We can describe the text by the text size and the text size is de described uh, with two numbers. N, which is the number of words, and the text and V, it's the number of the vocabulary. It's the set of types. OK, so. Um, yeah, 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 the vocabulary size, because in the text, uh, it's like you can use the same word. Uh, uh, in so many places, so you count it only once, but in in, in the uh, yeah, yeah, the you consider it in the number of the tokens, okay? So for instance, it's, uh, it's like we have switchboard phone conversation. This is a it's like a text collection. We have 2.4 million tokens, but the vocabulary size is 20,000. It's just, there is only 20,000 words that is used in this uh, corpus. And Shakespeare is, uh, you have this number and it's that the vocabulary, it's less as you see. And the same for Google Anagram, it's 1 trillion and you have here only 13 million. Uh, so it's, uh, it's like the vocabulary is always less than the number of tokens in, in and in it's like in a text collection. Okay, issues in tokenization. So Finland's capital, Finland, uh, uh, you have so many uh, form for the word Finland. So you have Finland, Finland, Finland with the apostrophe, apostrophe. Okay, and we are, I am, isn't, you have this different variation for that. Okay, and for this, you have this with the hyphen and this is without the hyphen. And the state of the art, it's the same. This is with hyphen and this is not with the hyphen. So we need to uh, uh, it's like normalize this token. And we have uh, 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 
yeah, we have so many problems in some specific languages, like for instance in French, we have the uh, the uh, the definite article. This this is a part of this is this is a. Uh, 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 is considered as a part of the of the French language, so it's uh, it's not a token. So you consider this as one word, uh, but in English it's it's like you have the da, an ensemble. Uh, it's it's different words, and in German, in German, can you imagine what is the problem there? It's in the in the tokenization that you cannot identify the token because the German noun combats are not segmented. For instance, you have this uh, compound noun. So this is, this is all these are a noun. What is the noun? Life insurance uh, company employee. So it's one token in German language. So it's uh, it's really hard to tokenize this. So in Germanese, there is no spaces because the spaces is uh, used in uh, so many language and tokenization. And uh, in Germanese and Chinese, uh, there is no spaces. Okay. And um, one way to tackle this problem is that we can use uh, the maximum matching. So we can tokenize uh, using the maximum matching so the longest matching that you find, okay, this is a token, and you search again, and you find uh, it's like the longest matching that you can find it as a as a word in your vocabulary, and you consider it as another token, and so on. And it's like uh, here is a word segmentation algorithm. So given uh, a word list in Chinese, you start a pointer. So this is the algorithm that I just described that that is I just mentioned uh, 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 now. Okay, uh, the normalization need, we need to normalize terms because we need to normalize that. We want to match this and this. This is like because we have different ways to write it. And We have so many ways to do that. So we can delete the period, or we can use uh, we can use a symmetric uh, expansion. What we mean by a symmetric expansion, when when the it's like the user enters this query, you can search with window and windows. That is query expansion. That is called query expansion. Expansion. So you can in this way you can find all the form of the words that is. Uh, matches uh, the term that user use in searches. Okay, and also you can expand with capital and small letter, as you see here. And the case folding. Uh, by the way, it's converting the uh, the text into lowercase. It's really useful for. Uh, some applications like information retrieval, but this, it is not not useful for some uh, um, natural language processing tasks like sentiment analysis and machine translation and information extraction. Because uh, like us, us is different from us. Okay, so it's you need to match this. It's as, as a different terms in, in these tasks. So you really need to understand when you need to apply some pre-processing steps and when when it is useful and when 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 it is not useful. And by the way, one one of the like the the most frequent. Uh, 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 a problem that uh, is like most of the students that they fall in this problem that they apply, uh, for instance, stimming or normalization for uh, sentiment analysis task, and and it's it's not uh, it's not good for this task. It doesn't improve the, ex the accuracy. You lose a lot of information when you apply uh, 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 some of the text normalizations. 
uh, steps uh, for this task. So you need to really understand what is useful and what is not useful of these uh, steps for my task. Automatization is to, it's like if you want to. Hello, just uh, Dr. Matas, just excuse me. Could you please just uh, go back to the previous slide? Yes. Uh, just, I have a question, like, is there any uh, current system that can help us to understand whether this is U.S. or us from the context, like, something to be, like, done by itself, like, just uh, something to recognize whether this is U.S. or us, like, based on the context, is there any, any sort of a system that that might help in this regard or some some research or something like this yes 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 if you uh, um if you uh, like have the, the uh, named the uh, named entity recognition system and the part of speech tiger it can help to uh, resolve this ambiguity that okay this is a name of uh, a, a, or this is a name of a country and it's like considering the context, okay, and this is uh, it's like adverb that is um, uh, uh, or uh, that is uh, uh, used in in this context. So with the part of speech tagging and the named entity recognition uh, engines that you can resolve this uh, uh, ambiguity and. Uh, um yeah, most of the uh, um, let's say the nlp uh, uh, systems nowadays i mean it's like in the google assistant and uh, machine translation they have this uh, capability of recognizing this is it is it possible like to use for example because what you said that the uh, limitations and uh, steamers are not good with the sentiment analysis. But yeah. like, is, is there any uh, possibility that if we somehow combine the um, these techniques which you just mentioned with the steamers, for example, or limitizers, okay, to uh, to improve the sentiment analysis, or that won't won't still won't improve? Okay. Um... Um, uh, um, uh, using using uh, 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 steamers for sentiment analysis does not improve the uh, uh, the accuracy of the system because of uh, uh, for instance you like uh, like consider this uh, unhappy okay if you use if you apply steamer so this part will be it's like removed as a prefix so uh, it's like the meaning is turned into uh, it's like and like this is that this was negative and it's it's turned into positive that's why using uh, um, steamers for the sentiment analysis doesn't help and for machine translation, you need to preserve all the information to accurately translate from the source language to the target language. That's why applying uh, limitization or stimming doesn't help. But normalizing the text, what I mean by normalizing the text is that, okay, you have uh, uh, you as a, it's written in this form, you normalize it in uh, like this, you as a, this is okay. This helps, but applying sentiment and uh, sorry, applying uh, 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 limitization doesn't help for this uh, task because it's uh, it's like you lose a lot of information. That's like a valuable information. It's like for this, it's like if you lose this, it's like the meaning turned from negative into positive. That's why it's not uh, useful for that for these tasks. Okay, um, thank you. I mean, I understand this point, but my point was um, like, is there any way to make a sort of conditional limitization or conditional stim or something like that, like uh, based on uh, the flow of the uh, text or the flow of or the context of the text? Yes, like yes, yes, yes. And I understand. It's, uh, it's like most of the. Um, okay, let's turn into. 
something really practical. By the way, it's like a, I can show you here. So it's uh, you have Spacey. This is an open source uh, language processing uh, library that you can build uh, a pipeline. And the pipeline, you can uh, specify that okay, if the task is like so, you do one, two, three. If it is like so, you do. Um, uh, other things. So is you can define pipelines with this library. So most of the NIP uh, uh, solution or ecosystem, let's say that you can, as you said, that you can um, uh, make these conditions based on the task. Okay, thank you very much. Can we stop now for just uh, to pray? Then we maybe we uh, can uh, resume after uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes. Okay. Yes, 15 minutes. So inshallah, I think at 5:50, uh, maybe. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. I see some hand. Oh, okay, that was you. Uh, sorry, because Dr. Nabil, because I, I was uh, I couldn't I I don't see the screen. So please feel free anytime to interrupt me and uh, uh, um, uh, 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 guide me with the session. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. I'll stop recording now. Then we'll resume the recording after a while. Okay. See you in 15 minutes. Ciao.